it is not good to always be querying the database. On occasions, we can use cache so that we can free our database to do other operations. This will make our application faster. Hello, my name is Felipe Gavilan and today we will talk about Output Cache. This is a free course for minimal APIs in YouTube. Nevertheless, if you want to learn more about minimal APIs, buy my Udemy course today, in which we will learn from scratch to create web APIs using minimal APIs and Entity Framework Core. So let's see how to work with Output Cache in Esperonet Core. The first thing that we must understand is what is cache. Cache is basically a high-speed data layer. This is important because users can obtain the data they want faster. We also can use cache when the data is not going to change frequently. In our web API, we're creating a database of people. Let's suppose that this data doesn't change frequently. So this is an opportunity to use cache to make our web API faster. In modern versions of .NET, we can use output cache. Output cache allows us to store data in memory in a very simple manner. Also, we can avoid to execute the endpoint entirely because we're going to serve data directly from cache. And we will also have a mechanism to refresh cache. Let's see. We are here in Visual Studio in the application that we have been building so far. So let's come to the Solution Explorer. First, I want to see what happens when we don't use cache. For example, let's come here. I want to come to this endpoint that we have here, map get people. I want to put a breakpoint here and I want to press F5 to run my application in debugging mode because I want you to see that every time we execute this endpoint, we're going to execute this line of code and we're going to touch our database. So let's go to our HTTP file. Let's come to person get all, send request. And as you can see, we have activated the breakpoint and we're going to touch our database F5 to continue the execution of our application. And as you can see, we have the response here. But if I click on send request again, again, I have to touch the database just to send back the same information, the same data. That is not efficient. That is not good. So what we can do is to use cache. So shift F5 to stop running the application in debugging mode. Let's come to the program class. And in order to use output cache, I have to come here to the add services to the container part of my program class. And just below it, I can say builder services add output cache. Now with this, we're making output cache available in our application, but we are still not using it. In order to use it, we have to come here and put a middleware. We can put it after use HTTPS redirection. So let me say here, app use output cache, and this will allow me to intercept the execution of the HTTP request pipeline and not even allow this endpoint to be executed because we're going to have the response in cache. So let's come here and let me delete this and let's see how to use output cache in an endpoint. I can say cache output. I want to cache this output and I need to define how much time is the data going to live in cache. We can say one day, one hour, one minute or whatever. Just for testing purposes, we're going to say time span from seconds and I'm going to say 15 seconds just to keep things simple. All right. So that's actually it with this. We're using cache. So let's see. Let me press F5 once again to debug my application. So let's come back here and let's see that now I can press send request one more time. And of course, we are here in this endpoint because we don't have the data of the response of this endpoint in cache just yet. That is going to be automatically store in cache after we execute this endpoint. So F5, let's see that we have our response here. And if we click on send request one more time, you are going to see that this breakpoint didn't get activated. And we are simply getting this response here, as you can see here. And if we go to headers, you are going to see that we have H10. This means that this response that we have here comes from cache and that cache has been there for 10 seconds. Now, more than 15 seconds has passed and therefore this cache has expired. And therefore, if I click on send request, you are going to see that we once again execute the endpoint and therefore activate this breakpoint. And if I press F5, you are going to see that again. If I press send request one more time, you can see that it just flickers because it quickly gets a response from cache. Now, what's important here is that we're not hitting our database every time we want to get the information of our people. And that is great because that now 
makes our application faster and more scalable. Nevertheless, we have a problem. If we create a new person and there is information in cache, then there is a risk that our clients will see stale data. Let's test this. Let me press Shift F5 and let me come back to the program class and let's say here 60 just so that I have more time and let's see what happens. Let me press Ctrl F5. I want to prove to you that this error actually occurs. So now if I click on some request, of course, you can see that this data comes from cache because we have here header three, three seconds. Okay. Now let me create a new person. For example, I can create Marcos send request. Okay. So Marcus was created. And if I come back here to get all send request, oh, we don't have Marcus here, but he exists. We just created him. But since this information is in cache and it was cached before the existence of that record, then we don't have him in here in this response. Now that may make your user think that there is an error. So how do we fix it? We can refresh the cache after we create a person or after we update a person or after we delete a person. So let's do that. Let's come to the program class. You will see that this is very easy. Now, the first thing that we need to do is to put, let's say a name to this cache just so that we can reference it. So we're going to say tag. We're going to put something like a name here. And let me say here, people get. So this will be the name of this cache. So it's like a key for the cache. All right, so let's come back down here and let's go to my post and we're going to use a new service called I output cache store, output cache store. Now from here, I can say await after the save changes, of course, after we created a new person, we're going to say await output cache store, evict by tag async, we're going to evict that cache by tag, by its tag, and therefore I will pass people get and I don't need to pass a cancellation token because I don't intend to cancel that operation. So I can just pass default. All right. So let me copy this line of code and let me do the same for my put. So I output cache store, output cache store. And let me come down here and let me paste this here. And the same goes for delete. Let me come here. I output cache store output cache store and after this if I can put my line of code. All right, so now this will work. Let's make the same test one more time. So let's come back here. Let's see that we have our breakpoint. Let's press F5 to run our application in debugging mode. And let's come back to the HTTP file. And let's see that if I click on the get all send request, we're going to see that indeed we activate the breakpoint F5 you are going to see that we have here the response with Marcus. Now let me create a new person like Laura. So Laura, all right, send request. As you can see, we have Laura. And if we come back here, you can see that I can send request. And again, we are here. We are here again, even though 60 seconds hasn't passed because we refresh the cache. So F5, you are going to see that, of course, we have Laura here. And if I click send request one more time, you can see that now we're serving this information from cache because we didn't actually execute this endpoint. We just serve the information from cache. So as you can see, we can make our application more scalable and faster by using output cache. If you want to learn more about minimal APIs, buy my Udemy course today. You will learn how to create applications in minimal APIs from scratch using Entity Framework Core link with a discount in the description of this video. Thank you.